guys, it's Kim. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. Today I wanted to go over sinking funds, what they are, what the purpose is for, and how to create, eight or start sinking funds. So if you are interested in learning more about those, then keep watching. First, just to give you guys more of an explanation of what sinking funds are. Sinking funds are like mini short-term savings accounts for certain categories or expenses. You may have seen setups of my previous sinking funds. I only have a few right now, um, but they are a great option for you to kind of budget and, and also be prepared for upcoming expenses that you may forget or you may just not expect. So I'm gonna go ahead and just list some categories down and maybe this will give you guys ideas on different categories for you or it may just give you a better example of what sinking funds are for. So one of the first ones that I started to create was for birthday or gifts. So any anniversary, like my parents' anniversary, I like to get them a little gift. Um, birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Easter, Valentine's Day. I like to spoil my dog too, and so sometimes I'll save up some money for her to get a little tree or gift. So that is one of the first things I created a sinking fund for. Another one was Christmas. So for Christmas, it always comes at the end of the year, as we all know, and I used to always wait until the last minute to try to budget and get get the gifts and not overspend. And so I finally created a Christmas sinking fund and that has helped me stick to a budget and and also not freak out when it gets closer to Christmas and realizing that I don't have the amount of money that I would like to get certain gifts. You can also set one up for car insurance. I believe six months is the usual time frame for car insurance. Some people may pay every 12 months, but mine is six months. You can also do it for like AAA or car memberships. I use this in case my car breaks down. I at least kind of have a relief knowing I have them as a backup to help me. Also car maintenance. Oops. It's gonna bend that. You can also do home maintenance. If you have a house, you know you're, you should be expecting repairs to come up every now and then. And so you can start creating a sinking fund to have some of the costs ready to be paid for up front. Let's see, we're gonna do water, electricity, or any other utilities. Some people group this together. I would separate these. I don't have a home or an apartment. I'm still living at home and so I'm not paying for that. But if I did live on my own, I would probably put those in a separate category, but definitely do what's best for you. You can also do a giving fund. You can do a vacation. You can do like a hair fund or nail fund if you get your nails done. You can also do like a beauty fund. So if you were wanting to get makeup or even like skincare products that you were wanting to try that weren't necessary or necessities, you can put that down and give yourself a sinking fund for. You can also use sinking funds for subscription services like Amazon. Um, they have an annual subscription option and I do know that saves you a little bit of money, so that would be a great option for you to start a sinking fund for. Um, I forgot to put this up with the car categories, but I have car tags, and so I have created a sinking fund specifically for that. You can also do medical, because as you get an adult and you start paying for everything, 
you realize that medical expenses never fail to pop up. You can also do like a prescription fund too, if you were wanting. You can do dental, vision, maybe a business category. You can do like a fund money. You can do clothes. So some people may go shopping and get something once a month or every week. This kind of helps you keep a budget without going crazy on clothes and then you can just use the money when you see something on sale or if you just find something that you like instead of just getting it whenever. And then I thought of concerts too. I really enjoy going to concerts and so this would be like a fun way to save up money for a concert in case something pops up. So now that you kind of can kind of get an idea of the categories that you would use sinking funds. Now I'm going to show you how you would keep track of them. So with certain sinking funds like birthday and Christmas, usually I track or I come up with the budget of how much I want to spend per person. And then I will, I will divide that amount by 12 months to tell me how much money I would need to put aside every month. And so for birthday, let's just say that you were wanting to aim for $500 a year for everybody, your friends, your families, your loved ones, your spouse maybe, kids, teachers, anything like that. You want to set aside $500. And then you would just take $500, divided by 12, that's going to get you about $42 every month that you'd want to set aside. So obviously when you're just starting out and creating sinking funds, you're not going to have anything as a beginning balance. But this is where you would place what the balance was from the previous month. So let's say for birthday, we're starting off with zero and we are wanting to add $42 a month. Then at the end of the month, you would subtract how much you actually spent. So let's say I put $42 in at the beginning of the month, and then towards the end, there was a coworker's birthday. I wanted to get something for them. So then I spent a total of $20. That means for at the beginning of next month, I would have 20, actually no, I would have $18 left. So you're just gonna do that with, for every category. So let's say we were wanting to budget $1,000 for Christmas, and I wanted to start at the beginning of the year. I'm gonna start at zero, and I would put aside about $83 every month. Now the great thing is too is um, you can start off with a limited amount. I believe I started off with just three. I started off with a giving fund, a birthday fund, and a Christmas fund. And then I have added car tags. I have added several others and I will continue to add on to that once I can kind of find it in my budget more. This works great for even anyone in high school that's just starting a job. Um, you can do just the basics and then once you move out you can add you know home maintenance and water and electricity you don't have to start everything at the same time you can kind of create them as you go and figure out what is needed at that specific time um, so let's go ahead and just keep going through this now another thing too is say you had some savings i follow the dave ramsey baby step method and the first step is to save a thousand dollars so let's say in my savings account i had fifteen hundred dollars and so maybe instead of keeping that fifteen hundred i wanted to put aside the extra five hundred dollars towards sinking funds then maybe you can put in here some money set aside so for car insurance my car insurance is about $700 every six months. So if I were to calculate that, that'd be about $116. So let's say I wanted to put aside $250 of that amount of money I had saved. So then we are going to keep adding. 
I'm going to say 117 just to cover my balances. Then you can go ahead and do that. Now let's say my AAA expires or renews in February of every year. So let's say as of July right now, we're in the middle of July and let's say I should probably start saving up for AAA because I always forget and then it's an extra almost 90 bucks for me to take out of my bank account and budget at February. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. So obviously if my AAA was $85 for a year and I wanted to save up for 12 months, it's going to be about $7.10 each. But because I'm already halfway through the year, I would just start off with 85 and divide it by six or however many months I had left. So obviously it doubles that amount. I'm at $14. And so I'm just going to put aside more money until I catch up. Then once I get to February and this renews, then I'm going to start from the beginning with the balance of zero and then I will calculate it and divide it by 12 months instead of six. So you can start whenever. You don't have to start at the beginning of the year or whenever these renew or expire. So AAA, I'm gonna put zero. Let's say for the $85, I would put aside about $15 just to make easy carp maintenance. I would put maybe about $20. So in this case scenario, I don't know when my next maintenance fee will be, whether it's an oil change or something comes up. So in this case, I would treat it as a small savings account and I would just keep putting money in until I either feel that I have a sufficient amount in there saved or just continue on and save and save and save. Let's say I had $20 set aside already. I'm going to add $20 and unless something comes up, I'm just going to put a balance of $40 here and keep adding $20 until I want to stop. And then of course, if something comes up, then I just take the amount needed and subtract it in the coordinating column. House maintenance is the same. They say, I believe it's like 1% of your mortgage. So let's say we wanted to do, we know we wanted to do 2000 a year saved up just in case, we're going to save about $167 a month. And let's say we have a balance of zero. And then we'll just keep doing that. And then let's say there's a leak in the pipes or this can also apply to decorative changes too. So if you were wanting to paint or if you were just wanting to add some curtains that could be considered part of the home maintenance category I mean it's more for decor but it adds value to the house when you are renovating and redesigning your house so you could put that in your house maintenance too now water water I believe is every two months for my parents so if my average was $80 divided by two we're gonna want to make sure we have $40 every month put aside Electricity, I believe that's a hundred dollars. And so if we wanted to divide that by let's just say that's two months. We'll just put fifty dollars aside. Giving, this is like another small savings account, so I have no goal for a certain amount of time. It's just to put it in there in case I need it for like a rainy day fund. So let's say the beginning was zero and I want to put in $20 a month. Vacation, now some people have a certain amount, maybe they do something every year, they know the cost or they know an estimate. Let's say in this case I want to save up a thousand dollars and I want it by the end of the year, so 12 months. That's going to be about $83 again. I'll put $84 this time and so forth. So you're just going to keep doing that every single um, month for every single category. And then what I would recommend is either at the bottom, depending if you have enough room, or on another page, you'll just write down the 
transactions that you've had so that way you can keep track of where that money went. And I'll just show you an example. So this is my sinking fund page for July. Obviously you can see the beginning balance, what I'm hoping to add. And then at the end of the month, I will add if I've taken out any money and the remaining balance. But at the bottom here, I have enough room to write down transactions. Now I don't have a lot of categories and so therefore I should always have enough room here to write down if I ended up getting a birthday gift or I um, ended up paying my car registration or I went to the hair salon, whatever it may be, I have enough room here. But if you don't, you can always just add it in a separate page and keep them together. But that is pretty much what sinking funds are and what they're made for. I think sinking funds are a great way to and really start budgeting. This kind of helps you prepare for unexpected expenses as well as just keep rainy day funds for certain categories that you know you're going to spend every now and then like makeup or clothes and that kind of keeps you accountable. You can also do this with cash envelopes. A lot of people use cash envelopes. They put the cash once they withdraw from their bank and they will keep it in there and they will just spend that cash until it's gone and then once the, the cash is gone they wait until the next month or whenever they are planning to put more money in um, but you can also do it through a checking account like me or a savings account i don't really recommend a savings account just because usually they have a maximum amount of withdrawals every single month and you don't want to go over that limit so hopefully that has helped answer any of your questions or concerns if this video was helpful for you, make sure you go ahead and like this video. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that way so that way you can stay informed of when I post new videos. I post every Wednesday and Friday. And then let me know in the comments below if you have sinking funds and what was your first sinking fund that you created. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day. Take care.